Beatles fans around the world know that John Lennon owned Tittenhurst Park, but not many know that it was also owned by Ringo Starr. And there's a lot of cool stuff to know about that. Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we're going to travel back in time to check out some of my favorite historic photos of Ringo Starr's Tittenhurst Park. This is part one. Before I begin, please like and share the show, and kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. This is Ringo Starr at Tittenhurst Park in 1972. Next to him is Mark Bolin. This was a scene from the documentary Born to Boogie, which was about the phenomenal success of the band T-Rex. It was directed by Ringo Starr. At the time, Tittenhurst Park was essentially empty because John and Yoko had moved to New York City and they had planned to stay in the United States. And so I guess he was cool with Ringo shooting a documentary on the property. Around that same time, Ringo shot a promotional film on the property for a single Back Off Boogaloo, which was inspired by Mark Bolin. Ringo acquired the property in 1973 after John Lennon decided to stay in the United States for good. Word has it that John didn't even tell Ringo or any of his other friends that he was selling the property. Instead, John just listed it for sale with a realtor. And Ringo found out about it afterward. So I assume a realtor's fee was unnecessarily paid to somebody who didn't do any work at all. Why in the world John didn't tell his friends and family that he was selling the estate, I have no idea. Better yet, why didn't John keep the estate? This guy was rolling in dough. Why in the world would you sell this beautiful English country estate and put it in a trust for, oh, I don't know, your son Julian? Or how about as an estate for your family to live in? John Lennon had stepsisters, you know and aunts and uncles and cousins who he was once very close to. Why in the world didn't he just keep it? I just don't get it. If you have any thoughts about this, let me know in the comments below. This image shows Ringo and a designer named Robin Kruikshank. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Kruikshank. 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 There's, there's really only one way to say that, right? Robin Kruikshank. The two gentlemen formed a company together called, you ready for this? It's a very creative name, R-O-R, -R, which sort of stands for Ringo or Robin or Robin or Ringo. I guess they didn't know whose name should come first, and so they decided to come up with R-O-R -R in order to sell stuff like donut-shaped stainless steel fireplace rounds and hip and cool modern chairs and tables for people to buy who had money to burn. So, what do you think about having a stainless steel donut-shaped fireplace around? Would you want something like this in your home? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, Ringo and Robin filled the mansion with all sorts of stuff from their company. In 1974, Ringo shot another promotional film on the property. This time it was for the song Photograph, which was co-written by the great George Harrison. I hope you're enjoying this video showing snaps of Ringo Starr's Tinhurst Park. Before I continue, can you please do me a favor and like and share the show and kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And if you could join me on Patreon, that would be really great too. The problem for Ringo at this point was that Ringo couldn't afford the estate. Yeah, I know he was a Beatle, but he clearly didn't have the revenue that the others did. So, in late 1975, Ringo relocated to Monte Carlo for tax-related reasons though he appeared to divide his time between Monte Carlo and Los Angeles. He resided in a prestigious apartment situated within Monaco's renowned Rockabella Complex. That's a good name, right? Rockabella? Rockabella. It's a good name. At the time, I believe rent was the equivalent of 250,000 pounds a year. Now, according to UK law at the time, Ringo was not allowed to step foot on his own estate in the UK for a certain number of years, otherwise he would have owed a ton of back taxes on it. Isn't that wild? And so when he had to meet with his estate manager, or anyone else who was working for him at Tittenhurst Park at the time, the closest he could get was to meet them at a pub down the road. Crazy, right? 
So what Ringo decided to do is rent out the estate to be used as a residential recording studio. And that way musicians could sleep in the bedrooms upstairs or go downstairs to the kitchen where a chef would cook meals for them, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some snacks here and there. And they could record in the studio that John Lennon had built and they could record there anytime, day or night. This is the brochure that Ringo had designed in order to promote the studio. Ringo had also formed his own record company so that he could sign musicians and have them stay and or record there. And some really amazing musicians stayed at Tittenhurst Park, many of whom I spoke to, including the guys from Whitesnake, Def Leppard, Judas Priest, Brand X, Slade, and more. So, what do you think of Tittenhurst Park being turned into a residential recording studio in the 70s? If you were in a band at that time, would you have wanted to stay and record there? I mean, seriously, imagine sleeping in John Lennon's bedroom. That's pretty cool. And to be able to walk through John Lennon's gardens. As many of you know, I spoke to many of the musicians who recorded and stayed at Tintner's Park. And because I'm interested in design psychology, I was speaking to them about how that type of environment affected their productivity and creativity. And they told me that it was amazing. And so a lot of the times when they were recording and things just weren't working the way they wanted it to, they would just take a break. And they would just go walking through the gardens. And being in that kind of environment with a beautiful museum of trees around them and these rolling hills and the beautiful flowers and just that fantastic environment allowed them to clear their minds. Whatever problems they were trying to work out in their minds kind of all came to them. And so then they would come in from the gardens and would be able to start working again on their songs with a totally new perspective. And so we can thank Ringo for turning Tintner's Park into a residential recording studio for a brief time anyway, because a lot of great music came out of it as a result of musicians being able to stay and work in this incredible environment. By the way, in part two and part three of this series, and maybe even more, I'm going to show you snaps of some of Ringo's possessions at Tintner's Park, as well as some never-before-seen snaps of the mansion and gardens. By the way, I don't know who took some of the photos that I've shown in the show, and so if you do, will you kindly let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit they deserve. At this point, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this time travel adventure to check out some of my favorite photos of historic rock and pop star mansions. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell because there will be more videos like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, all of the beetles chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog, or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys. Mm -hmm.